So as mentioned in the overview video this week, we are going to begin by taking a look at informational text and learning how readers can summarize what they've learned in an informational text. So we know that when we're writing a summary, because I know you guys have heard this word before, we're really just briefly restating the main idea and the key details to help us understand what we've read. So writers and readers, they'll often organize these texts using perhaps a graphic organizer that focuses on the main idea and key details. And then what you're doing when you summarize it again is just restating those main idea and key details. We do that by putting the information on our own words. And again, the reason that we do this is to help us better understand the information we've learned in this informational text, right? We're learning that they are just like packed full of information and new learning. For example, let's take a look at this short text. Even the toothbrush has a history. A couple things here that I noticed right away. History is written in bold words, right? And it's bright red. So I know that this text is going to be focused all on the history of the toothbrush, right? Fascinating and how maybe it's changed over the years. And if you look over here at the second part of my split screen, you can see that I am going to complete a graphic organizer today with you that focuses on the main idea and some of those key supporting details. And again, we're doing this so that we can then go on to summarize the text in our own words. Again, helping us to better comprehend or remember what we've just learned and what we've read. So let's go back into this text. Even the toothbrush has a history. The toothbrush has a history dating back thousands of years. Ancient Egyptians used toothbrushes made from the frayed ends of twigs. Hmm, that's interesting. I don't know if a twig would be something I want to like scrub my teeth with. I don't know. This is just me thinking aloud. Good readers do that as they read. In the 1400s, the Chinese invented the first bristle toothbrush. Thank you to the Chinese because now we're no longer using twigs and sticks to brush our teeth. The bristles were made from pig hairs attached to a bamboo handle. Okay, so I guess we're no longer using twigs, but now we're using bristles from pig hairs, pig hairs to brush my teeth. Interesting, let's continue reading. In 1938, the invention of nylon led to a modern toothbrush made of soft bristles. Okay. So now we go into nylon and now it's just kind of more like what we use now. So far what I'm thinking guys, sorry for the bell, is that this has talked about materials, right? Materials that the ancient Egyptians used, materials that then the Chinese came along and used, and now materials that are being invented um, that are more like what we use today with nylon. These improvements led to today's toothbrush, which comes in all shapes and sizes, but the basic job of the tool has not changed much. The toothbrush is still used to keep our teeth healthy and clean. Okay, so now that I have read through this text about the history of the toothbrush and I've thought about it as I've read, I know that it's about how the basically the materials have changed over time. There were different additions that made it kind of what it is today. But now I'm going to switch over here and see, okay, so now that I know about the text, what am I being asked to do with it? So in the directions it says, use what you learned from the article to complete the graphic organizer. Read the statements from the box below. So if I scroll down, I see the graphic organizer. Looks like I'm going to identify the main idea or what the article is mostly about and three key details that support the main idea. So my teacher has given me one, two, three, four, five sentences from the text or about the text. And I have one, two, three, four boxes, meaning that one of these is evidently not the main idea or a key detail. So let's go through and read these together. Ancient Egyptians made toothbrushes from the frayed ends of twigs. The materials used to make toothbrushes have changed over thousands of years. In the 1400s, the Chinese invented the first bristle toothbrush, which was made from pig hairs. Sorry. The 
These improvements led to today's toothbrush, which comes in all shapes and sizes. And last but not least, in 1938, the invention of the ni of nylon led to a toothbrush with soft nylon bristles. Now, I've said that this is all about how the materials have changed and how they've improved the materials. So when I look back at these bullet points, I saw I saw that one of these had to do with materials and how they've changed over the years. So if I were to highlight this right here and determine that that is the main idea, then what I can do is either go through and copy and paste it, or I can retype it right here. So I'm going to go ahead and type it. The main idea is that the materials used to make toothbrushes have changed over thousands of years. And again, so that's my main idea. And now I'm going to look at the key details. So I need to figure out which of these sentences really support this main idea. So when we look, ancient Egyptians made toothbrushes from frayed ends of twigs. So this idea right here does mention materials. It also mentions a group of people, and I know that this was long ago. In the 1400s, the Chinese invented the first bristle toothbrush. Okay, so we've just read this next bullet point about in the 1400s how the Chinese invented a new material, and, well, they're not inventing it, but they are changing the toothbrush, right? Because now they are using pig hair. So, the idea that, again, the materials are changing and throughout history, so over time, and the group of people who are changing it. Let's look at the next bullet point. These improvements led to today's toothbrush, which comes in all shapes and sizes. So, for me, I'm thinking that this really doesn't talk about the material that's being used or how it's changed over thousands of years. Yes, it's talking about what it is today, but it's not mentioning any of the like materials or how it's changed. Let's read the last one and see if that better supports the main idea. So when we look at this last bullet point, in 1938, the invention of nylon, so again, talking about one of the materials and then how it's changed over the years. So now we're talking about, again, a change in dates, and it led to a toothbrush with soft nylon bristles. So again, how it's changed due to this invention. So I have identified one, two, three details that support the main idea, and this one right here really does not support the main idea. So now I can go through and type in these key details. Um, if I don't want to type them, what I can do is select the text, and I can copy, and I can go right down here in my graphic organizer, and I can paste. Again, detail you did not use and why. So again, I decided to leave out the detail about the improvements leading to today's toothbrush, which comes in all shapes and sizes. So I might say something like the detail about today's toothbrush coming in all shapes and sizes does not support that the toothbrush, oops, that the materials used to make the toothbrush 
So this is not necessarily a key detail. So moving forward, we are going to continue this practice with identifying the main idea and key details to then help us write a summary. Today you will be reading a text and you are going to do the same work. It is actually about hair. It is titled Hair Today Gone Tomorrow. And you are going to read it and determine using a bulleted list which statements support the main idea and key details and which one does not. Let me know if you have any questions.